Hey, I'm Louis Palmer and welcome to PlayBetterDrums.com and welcome to this lesson on ride cymbal and hi-hat playing and how to use finger technique to execute faster rhythms. This was another member request lesson. Someone was asking about playing faster rhythms on the ride cymbal. So the basic uh, foundation you need to have is finger control. And this is covered in a lesson on the foundation course. So before you begin trying to tackle uh, faster rhythms on the ride cymbal, whether it's uh, straight ahead jazz swing framework or whether it's a drum and bass kind of fast rhythm or anything else, you really have to have the right technique to play it. So when we're playing German grip or American grip, uh, a general palm down position around the drums on the snare drum and even on the hi-hat sometimes, that's not going to work for the ride cymbal. So uh, you have to be in a different hand position. We have to be thumb up. That's the natural position to play in, in terms of where you're, the position of your arm and hand. But also, uh, it's much easier to execute faster rhythms using your fingers. So, you need to have a practice pad. In this case, you do need to have a rubber practice pad with lots of bounce. Uh, this is the one um, purpose that you will need a, a bouncy pad for. And you just need to practice continuous strings of 16th notes, like this. So uh, you can work each, in, each finger individually. So we we'll start with the back finger and you can do groups of four, eight, 16, and then change to the next finger and the next finger and so on. So that was a long group for each finger. Then you can do shorter groups like fours. And so on and so on. Just coming up with different combinations, different exercises to keep you occupied uh, while giving your fingers a good workout. And it's also very important to make sure that you work the last finger, the smallest finger, people will often ignore that one, thinking that it's less powerful, less, you know, not as strong as the other ones and therefore is not as useful, but it's the furthest away from the fulcrum, which in this case, for finger control, it's gonna be the first finger. So the smallest finger is the furthest away and has a lot of leverage. So it's really important that you include that finger and build some strength. And I also hate it when drummers uh, you see them play whatever hand position they're using and their little finger is sticking out while they play because they haven't uh, built up the technique to use it. So that's the first thing. You need, to, you need to practice on pads and build that technique. And then once you're getting comfortable with that, then you start to move it to the ride cymbal and do the same thing, continuous 16th notes. And I should also say, when you're at slightly slower tempos, like that one, and slower than that, whether you're on the ride or the snare drum, it's important to make sure that you are not moving your wrist. Because at that kind of tempo, it's easy to uh, accidentally move into uh, wrist movement, like, like this, for example. If I was to move my wrist as well, So with that, I'm using fingers, but I'm also allowing my wrist to move. You want to not do that. You want to isolate the wrist and be able to choose when to do that um, and choose when to com uh, only use fingers. And another, another exercise you can do when you're on the pad is to hold your wrist like this and practice the different combinations. And then go through the fingers individually while holding your wrist so you really are making sure that uh, the fingers are isolated. So back to the ride cymbal, 
uh, move from the pad or the snare drum to the right and just practice the same kind of combinations, each finger individually, long periods of just 16th notes at different tempos. And then the next stage is to get into broken rhythms. Um, so when I was practicing this technique and wanted to apply it to hi-hat and rise cymbal, I found that I could play long strings of 16th notes and my fingers were super fast, but when I got to, particularly the hi-hat, but when I got to playing broken rhythms, um, then I had to start, kind of start again and adjust the technique that I'd been learning to playing these broken rhythms because there's a slightly different uh, movement to your hand and your fingers are playing, playing a slightly different role, playing short groups and then catching the stick. So the first one you want to play is this. So on that last note, you're catching the stick and pulling into the palm. So that's starting with an eighth note and then two sixteenth notes, and then we can do the other one, starting with two sixteenths. This is a little easier to play because I think you're able to throw the stick down for those two sixteenth uh, notes and then pull in on the third one. And once you're on the ride cymbal, um, try and come up with other broken rhythms, different combinations, go back and forth between continuous sixteenths and the broken rhythms. One variation I wrote down in the PDF is groups of five. So one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And on that last note, you pull in with the fingers again, like we did for the uh, groups of three. So that's good for practicing longer groupings, but then pulling in. And obviously, the longer the grouping, the harder it is to execute. So then insert the fives amongst other, the other broken rhythms and continuous sixteenths and start to improvise. And then to make it a little harder, move it to the hi-hat. So there's more bounce from a ride cymbal, and it's in, for, for the most part, whether you have the ride cymbal here, uh, or here, or even down here, there's going to be more bounce. It's just in a better position. Hi-hat is much, much more difficult. So if you play those broken rhythms again, you just have to pull the sound out a little bit more depending on where you have it placed. Uh, mine is fairly high to get out of the way for my traditional grip and my high snare drum. So that means, you know, I don't want to be sticking my shoulder out, but I do have to have my arm out this way like this. So then, with, particularly with the hi-hat, you can place it into some grooves. And then the other one. And then you can try playing the fives as a groove.
That's a particularly difficult one and really difficult on the hi hat. I can already feel my hands aching. And there's a bit more of a roll for the wrist uh, on the hi hat than there is on the ride symbol just because of the position, just something to get used to. And you want to also do it for long periods to find the comfortable position on the hi hat. Some guys play right out like this. Also to get out of the way of the left hand. And then other guys will be find a position that's much more close in above the other hand. I'm kind of in the middle somewhere. And then the next stage is to move it maybe back to the ride cymbal um, and incorporate it with some other playing. So you could be in a swing situation or you can be in a straight situation. The faster the swing gets, obviously the, the less space and time you have to really make sure you swing everything so it can kind of sound straight. Um, but if I take a straight thing to begin with and just incorporate it with some other uh, bass and um, snare drum things. And at that kind of tempo, even though that's fairly fast, there's still a certain amount of wrist involved. Um, so you, your wrist will move. You can't isolate the fingers completely. It's, that's more of an exercise for when you're doing it um, just for endurance purposes. And then as we get quicker, uh, then obviously less wrist uh, gets involved and more fingers. So that's just me stringing different things together. Uh, that's a good idea, a good framework is to just play quarter notes on the hi-hat, not too much snare drum or bass drum, and just try and come up with as many different uh, combinations, improvising without uh, hesitating. Uh, and then obviously you can apply this to your swing playing at, at various tempos, even at slower tempos. Sometimes if I'm playing something loose, uh, I will be in the finger position, but I'll make the fulcrum more between the second finger and the thumb. So, the, so that the stick has a little bit more room to move around up here. But my fingers are still shadowing the stick. And then if I'm playing a faster tempo, it'll be more from the front again. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next lesson.